Hello, good afternoon. Welcome back to our mornings. Once again, delighted to be joined by my friend and colleague, Dr. Felicity Corbin Wheeler. How are you? I'm good, thank you, Si. I'm full of wheatgrass and bananas this morning. We're going to be talking about bananas later. Exactly. We're actually <laughs> going to start today's show talking about the GMO, um, the genetically modified organisms, and we're going to then lead on to gluten, and we're going to finish off with uh, bananas. Um, so we'd love to hear from you if you'd love to send your emails and your text messages into the show and we'll try and cover that towards the end of the show. So shall we kick today off? Well, I think we should start with the genetically modified uh, program that's, uh, you know, Howard and Leslie have just been talking about that. And yesterday I was really shocked to see that Owen Paterson, the UK Environment Secretary, has announced that Britain is going to try and lead the way in bringing genetically modified crops to the market, to the world. And, you know, we have already discovered that there's so much damage done to health with genetically modified foods. There's an awful lot of them out already. And then the processed foods all contain GM stuff anyway. And uh, on the 25th of May, there was actually a march that happened in capitals all over the world of people who were protesting against Monsanto and the GM foods. And this had a tremendous effect and many countries have actually banned the GM foods. So why on earth is Britain going to try and promote them? It's, it's beyond belief. So I put something on Facebook and Philip Day has also put something on Facebook. So if people want to have a look at that, there's a very good clip on there. And we're also going to be sharing a clip with Dr. McCola, yes. uh, which is interesting. And I remember about a year ago, Howard interviewed Jeffrey Smith, who's an expert on this field. And it was a very, very powerful clip. And uh, I think that, you know, the clip today with Dr. McCola is just going to support that as well. That the, the brighter scientists know the problems. They've been feeding the genetically modified food to rats in, in labs yeah. and they have got cancerous tumours and died. Um, in India there's been a terrific outcry, there's been devastation. I mean so many farmers, apparently 250,000 farmers in India have committed suicide because their crops have failed, their, their animals have got sick and died and then their families are getting sick and dying. Can you just and give an overview on this, a summary on what are genetically modified crops? Well, what they do is, you know, we have God's beautiful foods that he's provided for us. And what they're doing is actually changing the organism. So once you've done that, uh, it's very, virtually impossible to ever go back to the matrix that God has put in all the fruits and vegetables that are beautifully made. The scientists don't even know all the all the good things that are in there and you know they keep discovering one little thing or another little thing but it's the matrix it's the synergy in the fruit and the vegetables um, and also in the wheat and the barley which of course they've now really genetically modified tremendously in America and in Australia but there is a huge public outcry about it and now is the time for people to do something about it to get active and stop this because very soon it'll be too late. Okay, well that's a nice introduction to, um, to the, some of the items that we're going to be discussing today. Um, we do have a clip um, in relation to the, the GMO and a study by Dr. McCola. So let's take a look at this and we'll come back right to the <coughs> This is Dr. Mercola, and I have some urgent breaking news to share. The first peer-reviewed lifelong study on rats consuming genetically engineered corn was published earlier this week in the journal Food and Chemical Toxicology. And what they found was very alarming. For two years, rats fed on Monsanto's genetically engineered corn or exposed to its top-selling weed killer, Roundup, suffered from massive tumors and organ damage. France, where the study was done, already bans the growing of genetically engineered crops, and two days ago they called for a probe that could actually lead to the European Union intervention, including an emergency ban of all imports of Monsanto's genetically engineered corn. 
So what caused France to take such drastic action? Well, in this study, 50% of the males and 70% of the female rats died prematurely compared with only 30% and 20% in the control group. The rats that were fed either genetically engineered corn or the herbicide Roundup had an increased risk of developing breast cancers, suffering organ damage, and dying prematurely. The cancer in the rats, and this is key, did not develop until well after 90 days, meaning that they were missed by almost all the shorter studies required for regulatory approval and always touted by Monsanto and FDA officials as solid evidence of the safety of genetically engineered foods. Remember, and this is key also, that contrary to popular belief, regulators at the FDA do not require independent studies verifying safety before approving the release of these products into our food supply. Genetically engineered seeds are patented use technology, so it is quite difficult, if not virtually impossible, for independent objective scientists to gain approval con to conduct impartial testing without violating these patents and running into serious legal risk. Despite the challenge in conducting this research, oh, there have been over 30 other independent studies that have shown very clearly that genetically engineered foods can be toxic or allergenic, and you can see them further down on this page below the video. Now, what makes this study so remarkable, though, is that it is really the first that was ever done for the entire lifespan of the animal. Now, humans live roughly 40 times longer than these rats, and obviously you will see the effects here long before they emerge in the human population. The real-life experiment feeding Americans genetically engineered food has been going on for about 10 to 15 years, and the 30-plus peer-reviewed animal studies demonstrate very clearly the urgent need for labeling in the United States to allow us to opt in or opt out of this ongoing gamble with our health. The right to know is fundamental. That's why 50 countries, including China and Russia and the European Union, have already enacted labeling requirements for genetically engineered food. As you know, I am one of the main supporters of California's Proposition 37 because I believe you have the right to know and to choose whether you and your family want to gamble with your health by eating genetically engineered foods that have been not been adequately studied and have not been proven safe. Hi, welcome back to our mornings. Um, I'm joined with Felicity Corbin Wheeler. Um, this first section, we're going to be talking about uh, genetic, genetically modified uh, organism, uh, which has currently been in the in the news recently. Um, Felicity, what are your thoughts on this? Well, you see, Owen Patterson, the environmental secretary, uh, has said that how wonderful it would be to have genetically modified food. We could then feed the starving world. <laughs> We'd actually kill the starving world. We'd, we'd kill ourselves as well. Um, the point is that if we were really going to uh, save the starving world, we would become vegan because, in fact, it takes 28 acres of crops to feed one steer for a few rich people to eat meat. And in fact, if we shared what we had and everyone was vegan, um, we would be able to feed the world anyway. And it's, um, but it was a, a very uh, a sort of a blackmailing way of saying, you know, we need to save the world. I mean, this is nonsense. The genetically modified food is killing people in a lot of the uh, the rest of the world, in India, for instance, where there is tremendous hunger already. What sort of, um, what sort of <coughs> foods are we eating that contains genetically modified food? Well, an awful lot, and uh, a lot of the vegetables are being um, changed now as well. So this is why we have to start growing our own. And what I have thought overnight is that what we should do, Sai, is start showing some clips on people gardening in their window boxes and in their flower beds, and if they have allotments or they have gardens, then great. If they have farms, that's wonderful. And we ought to really start teaching the Christian population 
how we can actually save ourselves in this situation by growing our own crops and making sure that nobody sprays them with anything and we make sure we get organic seed because this is going to be another big thing that uh, it'll be impossible to get organic seed once um, Monsanto have taken over all the seed in the world which is their idea to control to control the world once you control food supply you've really got uh, tremendous power and this is what's happening and people are just not aware of it but you know you and I have this wonderful hour to be able to talk to people um, especially the body of Christ um, in 169 countries and actually tell them the truth and um, I want them to also help us to email in if you are growing your organic vegetables then please interact with us we love that um, interact with us and give us some tips on how you grow it what you grow how you compost there's so many interesting things in this so I think we should perhaps develop that that would be a great thing to do because it's all part of getting well and staying well. Exactly. It's like how we, when, when we did our first shows together, we were doing the wheatgrass. Yes. How easy is it to grow wheatgrass, isn't it? Yes. Well, it's very easy. And um, I, was, I went on YouTube last night. I was looking for all these clips that we could use. And there's so many people doing uh, growing in containers and, and window boxes. And we can do that. And I've got an organic farmer in Jersey where I'm going back in the summer. And I can ask John for some tips as well. He's already helped a Revelation viewer who lives up in the island of Skye. Um, and he, this guy from the island of Skye, asked if he could uh, have some help on how to grow wheatgrass up there. So I've put him in touch with John Hammond in Jersey, who's an organic farmer. He has a beautiful farm called Vermont Farm, where I take my grandchildren. We buy the vegetables every week, and uh, we get the lovely fresh eggs from there, free-range hens. And it's just, it's, it's a joy. It's like going back into a sort of 50 years ago in Jersey when everything was much calmer and uh, it was just lovely. They've got beautiful view up there, a view right across the bay. Fantastic. So uh, he and his wife have had a really tough time keeping going because uh, a big supermarket, who should be nameless, moved in and they started providing organic in, uh, you know, in quotes, organic food. But it's not the same as John's local organic food, of course. I was going to ask you, how would, um, if we try and uh, remove the GM foods, how will that affect the, the average person in the street when they're doing their shopping and things like that, the cost of, of food? Well, you see, the food that I'm talking about is very inexpensive. It's carrots and apples and cucumbers. And um, it's not like the meat and the fish and the chicken that you buy, which is so much more expensive. So uh, my food bills are very low and um, you know it is a cheaper way and of course in the long run it's so much cheaper for us because of our health we don't have doctor's bills and our children stay well so um, what greater benefit could there be? Now going back to Dr. McCullough's video that we've just seen um, he explains that the, uh, the tests that they carried out on rats they found that they had organ damage they had problem with tumors mm -hmm. um, and developed in cancer and things like that why is this um, why is this only coming to light now or has this been going on the, the dangers of this being in the background and it just has it been had too much exposure in the media well I think it's uh, big money um, moving in and um, a lot of money is invested in in doing this so I think a lot of the truth has been suppressed as it has been with other things with other things in health big pharma and uh, you know coming back to natural medicine which is so much better for us so um, yeah I think that there's been a cover-up we know that Jeffrey Smith spoke with Howard well over a year ago on this and uh, of course the public is slow to wake up to this I think people are stressed um, you know there's difficulty with jobs at the moment um, we're having so many problems and people just go and buy something that's easy to eat but what is faster than buying a banana? You know, as I did this morning, I just had a banana for breakfast. It's such a fast food. And I've got um, some lovely clips to show you in other programs. I've got a lovely girl who's a model 
who's older than me, she's 75, I think now, and she's absolutely stunning. And she said, you know, in her model bag, she used to just carry some bananas. And <laughs> it's true, it's the fastest food. Exactly. Unzip a banana, exactly, you know. Yeah. 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 So um, yesterday, my organic lady here in, in Spain, she bought me a beautiful box of all fresh organic things for, uh, for this week ahead, because I've got two lovely Nigerians coming to stay with me, Nigerian ladies from London, Elizabeth and Tola. And uh, they've both been battling cancer and I'm giving them a week with me uh, here in Spain and they're going to come out on Monday so we're working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday nights and in fact Elizabeth is going to appear with us on Friday which is on the show which is really exciting. So what sorts of foods would you recommend for them to eat? Well I'll be doing the green juices for them we'll be doing a proper a proper detox week and um, Elizabeth has already been to Germany she's been doing some uh, alternative uh, cancer treatment which has worked really well on her body and so she will be full of interesting information for us and she will be a great encouragement to Adetola who comes from the Kingsway Church so it's lovely because that's Matthew Ashamaloa's church oh, so I'm really looking forward to them coming. Going back to GM foods now what are the other potential risks for for us by eating this? Well, of course, it damages the autoimmune system, and then that leaves you open to MS um, and Parkinson's and cancer, of course, and heart disease. You see, the immune system, as I keep saying, uh, is the total, the total system that heals us, keeps us well. And when it goes down, we get ill in all kinds of different ways. So as Dr. Lorraine Day said, when she got cancer really badly, she also developed the Parkinson's, pill rolling, um, you know, the, the, the damage with the, with the motor neuron system. It damages everything. And of course, the toxins go to our weakest organ. So with everybody, maybe they have a genetically slightly weaker organ, the kidneys or the lungs or whatever. And so obviously the uh, autoimmune system goes down in that organ first. So um, it's, it's a progressive thing. It starts with just not feeling very well, feeling tired, feeling um, you can't cope with life. And then you start getting little symptoms. And that's our wake up call from God, from our immune system saying, hey, you've got to do something about this now. And when people do something about it then, you know, they can prevent serious disease developing. But if you are feeding yourself um, genetically modified processed chemical foods, of course you are laying the path for, for a serious disease. So we'd like to obviously encourage our viewers to, to try and do the, the Genesis diet? Absolutely, it's the diet that God wants us to eat and uh, sin, after sin came into the world, you know, the Adam and Eve were covered, their shame was covered with the blood-soaked skins of the animals. So um, we're not supposed to be eating the animals. In Genesis 1, 29 and 30, it says very clearly that we're supposed to be eating the fruit, the vegetables, the seeds, the nuts and the herbs, and of course the grasses. Okay, so that was our, um, we just briefly discussed some items there on um, the GM foods. Uh, please stay tuned. We're just coming up to a break at the moment. The second part will be discussing gluten and bananas. Um, if any of our viewers do have any questions, please do send us an email or a text message and we'll try and cover these at the end of the show. If you have any other um, emails for Dr. Felicity, please send it to her and, um, and we'll try and cover that as well. Thank you and look forward to seeing you after the break. <laughs> 